don't get me wrong. What's going on with Aaron and this fight and this crazy damn near war that's going on right now is very important and at the top of my mind. But I think the number one thing on my priority list right now is confirming if Levi's alive. So if you could do me a favor, show and show me that, I'd appreciate you. What's up, Dapper Squad? It's your boy Darius back at it again with Attack on Titan Sundays. I am very, very excited. Last episode we ended in actually like climax, like peak, like cliffhanger, like it's still going. Like it's not like we resolved anything. It's a little slow. No, we're still right in the midst of it. Reiner currently has Eren pinned up against a wall with stabbed right here. He's just currently screaming like crazy. Half his brains are blown out. Meanwhile, on Yokopon is down freeing Armin, Connie, John, everyone down there. So we're going to see how they help. It, Armin could literally reverse the tide of this battle like like nobody's business. But meanwhile, Zeke, <laughs> OP ass Zeke came back and Haji used that distraction to escape with Levi. So I'm praying Levi is okay. Very excited about what's going to happen. Like I said, no theories, no predictions because Attack on Titan, no matter what I predict, it's not going to happen. I'm not as smart. I'm not as smart as Isayama. I'm nowhere near this man. Come on. He is a god in human and mortal form. So with that being said, if you guys would like to watch the full length version of this episode or the early access and full length version of any of the other shows I'm watching, those are available on the Patreon. Make sure to check that out. Links are in the description like always. Don't forget to subscribe. Click that bell so you guys always know when I post over here on the Dapper channel. Follow all the social medias, Instagram, Twitch, TikTok, Twitter, all at Dapper Darius. Much appreciated, y'all. Let's hop into this. Attack on Titan, Season 4, Episode 18. This one's called Sneak Attack, which has me hyped but also worried. Let's do this. She said yes, but she's worried why she said yes. Armin thinks she's... Aaron was lying about that. I also agree that Aaron was lying about that. But I don't know if it's Armin thinks Aaron's doing it because of some long-term goal that Aaron's going to save everyone. I have no idea. I just know either way, if it is the Ackerman autopilot or if it's not the Ackerman autopilot, I'm not surprised she wants to help Aaron, you know? It's hard to turn on the ones you've loved, your loved ones, you know? Aaron also but has been known to do things on his own and not want to involve people in his plans, you know, but I also, you know, it's interesting. I do remember that at the end of season three. That was a depressing ending. Oh, Lord. Is, that's not like his plan, is it? That's not what Armin's implying with that flashback, is it? I'm really liking the music right now, how it's not like, how was, was a smooth right, how it's not super action oriented, it's very emotional, because these are very high emotional stakes. He's not giving up that easy. Ooh, ooh, you could rip the top of your head off with that position. It looks like that's what he's trying to do, oh my god. What happened? Was that Peek who shot another shot? Oh my god. Oh my god. There he is. Magath couldn't have said it better. <laughs> no wonder, boy. <laughs> tell me why. No, tell oh my god, this is insane. Into the opening? Sneak attack. See, this is more the action music I would expect. Oh. Zeke back here. Oh. Like I said, I don't know whether to be hyped or scared. Or pissed. <laughs> I mean, look at how easily he could dismantle the Marley forces. That was two airships. This man's got an arm on him. Yeah, you guys do need to put Peek on him. How is he going to deal with Peek, though? Yeah, he's already aiming at you guys. Yeah, especially after season three and what he did to Levi and Ervin's troops, we know how devastating that man can be with just some boulders. Seeing them, man, try to go talk to you. Oh, this is going to be crazy. Yeah, you cannot let them come in contact. I, if of anyone, 
I want Armin and Falco to survive. I agree with Gabby right here. You should go save him. He is not wrong in the slightest. Yeah, he's probably living with so much anxiety and panic right now. Just knowing at literally any moment he could die. <laughs> I like how he put that. Chug, the enemy's won. At the end of the day, no matter what side you align on, Jaegerus or the OG military, we will defend Paradis from outside invaders. So, we're gonna get strapped up and do it. Mikasa with the scarf. Whoa, we're leaving the scarf behind? Symbolic as shit. Good. I actually like that. I like that. And that's the, I forget her name, but that's the girl that Mikasa saved in like season one. That is quite the shot right there. That is quite the shot. Look at that. She already thinks of the Zeke especially, but the Titans, Aaron, you know, as like gods and people who can change the world. And look what single-handedly they can do. Yeah, she's bricked up right now. She's hyped. I mean, literally, the rumbling, the world could change at any moment. Ooh, Reiner's already healed up. Good defense. Yes. Yeah, Zeke was supposed to be being watched by Levi. Yep. So that would lead you to believe the worst case scenario. So I'm praying to the AOT gods that they're still alive. Why is she making that face? Hell no! I have never seen someone switch up like, no. No. <laughs> An anti-Titan rifle, that's insane. Just in gun form? <gasps> Speak of the devil, you guys could save him right now. Did Niall see them? Oh, Falco's telling him the truth. Uh, Niall's a good dude. I think he's legit gonna help him get out of here. I mean, no matter what Gabby, Colt, Marleans have done, I think Falco's somewhat of an innocent kid. So I legit think he's gonna try to save him right here. But if this, I was about to say, if this ends up in Niall getting killed, I'm, I'm done watching the show, I swear to God. Good man. Good man, now. I've liked you ever since Ervin. I've liked you for a long time, actually. <laughs> end, of, end of season one. Oh, now that has even Colt questioning her loyalty? The fact that they didn't try to... She, I mean... Wait, are they right here as well with Nicolo and the Browse family? Oh, me and Ben are right here. Don't let Nicolo see fucking Mia. Yeah, see, she's sad because they still care about her. They're good people. And then she sees Kaya. Uh, yeah. Yep. That's like a double punch of guilt, honestly. I, I don't want to pause it, but that was a, that was very well done. Because immediately Colt questions why she instinctively did that. Like, hey, it seemed, you know, and which that in and of itself is crazy. And then she not only gets the guilt of the people who she's pained damn near the most in this world hoping that she's okay and she made it out safely because like i said earlier no matter what war is going on kids have no place in this sort of situation so there that's confirming to her the sort of thing that has been like a divisive controversial thing in her head this whole time that these eldians are good people i like kind of like what kaya said no matter what happened generations ago these are good people and then immediately gets doubled back with like the knife twisted in her like, oh yeah, 
I'm a piece of shit. I killed Sasha. Because Kaya's like, who cares what she did? You know, she killed Big Sis. I want to kill her. It's like, and she saw Kaya turn into this Kaya because of what she did. She saw the way the cycle just continues and continues. You know, it's very, very well done. Tackling Titan. Bravo. Gabby is one of the one of the most so far well written characters in the show. Like I'm not gonna say she is though, but she's up there, you know. Obviously you got Aaron, Armin Mikhail, there's so many. Countless. See She's broken. I've waited so long to hear her say these words. Thank you, thank you. That's such a big part of maturing that she needed to realize over and over. That cycle, that's what I'm saying. I feel, I mean, I feel horrible. Like once you realize what part you played in the cycle, you feel horrible, you know? He definitely also feels a huge amount of guilt helping Aaron. I like the symbolism. Yeah, oh, that's a huge amount of guilt. It's not only just the massacre on their people, but specifically Zofia and Udo. I don't want to pause it again, but I really like the symbolism that I don't know what the store that they're in is, but it's like a bird store because there's a whole bunch of bird cages. And I know a lot of people are telling me there's a huge symbolic, like, you know what I'm trying to say, of the symbol is a bird in a cage trying to be free. Like the ending shows Aaron in sort of a cathedral type thing, but it turns out to be a bird cage. Like, and they've showed birds many a times, you know, like, and this is literally their realization of the idea of freedom and how complicated just that in the theory is and the bird cage and how it was, oh, uh, oh, okay. I was not expecting Falco to say that. This is just a realization episode. Shouts out to my man, Falco. <laughs> he might die at any moment. He got the spinal fluid in his mouth. Ah, that's a valid... That's probably one of the only viable plans they can do to stop Zeke. I agree with that. Oh. I'm telling you, man. Oh. She's back in human form. That's where you met your end. Wait. Wait, was that Peaks? Okay. I was okay. I was I thought Peak died, but no, they that was a good plan. That was a good distraction. Okay. Sneak attack, title of the episode, Magus. <laughs> that was almost fucking dead on. If he was just a little more angled this way, that would have killed Zeke. I remember when he said that, season two. The coordinate, I, I miss those days, man. Again, back when it wasn't this high stake. We got we got literally seven different parties trying to get to Zeke right now. Oh my god, how do you leave it even on more of a cliffhanger? What the f Well, fantastic episode. All around. Great action, great twists, great surprises, great realizations, great character development. Loving it. This season is kicking ass so far, and I'm here for it. I want to start off with Armin and mikasa's i don't want to say debate but they're both are on opposite sides of aaron right now mikasa's team aaron is telling the truth he's doing this he's he's turned against them and armin is team aaron is all doing this for some long con to save everyone to do what he can for parody and he had a flashback to aaron in at the end of season three saying realizing that hey the world that we had thought was just this has gotten exponentially bigger now that we know that, that also means our enemies have gotten exponentially bigger. If we finally kill all them, will we finally be free? So is that some sort of plan he has? Because as of right now, Aaron is, what, 100 meters, 200 meters away from Zeke. And Zeke could scream just like Magus just said at any point. And literally next episode, the next 30 seconds, the next 10, like, it could, like, shit. 
like I'm, I'm saying this to not i'm not trying to like sound like a hyperbole like not trying to gas it up but literally the world will change at any point and it's, it's fucking insane it blows my mind like these all oh, this is peak attack on titan like we're here like season one when this aired in what 2013 did season one come out i don't know but a long ass time ago i was remember i was early i wasn't er was i early in high school it was a long time ago when i first watched season one but i just to start then and to think from then to where we are now it just it literally blows my mind like shit's gotten so crazy i was worried about oh my god and so right as of right now i'm on team i'll say i'm i'm, I'm divided i'm more towards team Armin, and i'm hoping that aaron has some sort of long con because he is our main character and i am praying that he does something at for the betterment of hopefully not just parody but for the world but i have no idea how that could happen i have no idea that's one thing i'll say zeke showing up this episode absolutely crazy perfectly timed right when reiner was on top of aaron about shit was about to go down actually aaron was about to rip off reiner's fucking head that was crazy but i think by far my favorite part of this episode was gabby coming to the realization you know that falco's had for a long time but it only took so much death in Sasha as well and for her to realize that. But I love the way it happened. I love the way it was done. And I love that they were in, like I said, that bird store and how all symbolic, all that. I don't know what kind of face Yelena made for Armin when Arm like that shit freaked me the fuck out. I wanted to, ooh, I got chills. But I gotta say MVP for this episode has gotta be Nio. Like any of the other i want to say almost like probably the only other ones i could think of keith pixies and nile would probably be the only ones who if they had a conversation with falco would do that same thing everybody else would either kill falco or take in what you know use him as bait to try to bait out gabby and colt and kill them as well like literally nile all of them are such good dudes you know and i, I think especially for nile it has a lot to do with his daughter and his wife and they've been mentioned multiple times when i remember with the coup d'etat and ervin when he brought up his wife he's like how's how's your wife and daughter doing he was like good i haven't seen them in a while because they were like in the second wall or whatever and then they did that whole ploy to where they made it seem like the wall was uh, broken and then the government was like oh yeah close it down everyone out there they're fucked and i was like well, hell no that's my that's the people of this place that's my family you know so i was like it's like, the, like everything has been seeded in so well throughout the seasons to the point where it's just all collectively and it all builds up and it's just really, really, really good. Isayama, I've said it multiple times. I'll say it again and again and again. This man with a pen is something else. A pencil, I don't know what to say. This man is fucking like, he has, like, I don't, you guys haven't seen Hunter Hunter, but if you have, there's a character with a power that she just uh, turns autopilot and her hand just starts writing and it's beautiful and stuff like that. And it's like, that's fucking Isayama. That man has that nen power. If you guys enjoyed, please leave a like. Let me know your thoughts down below. Don't forget to subscribe. Click that bell so you guys always know when I post over here on the Dapper channel. If you want to rewatch this episode in the full length or watch the other shows early access full length, check out the Patreon. Um, don't forget to drink some water. Tell someone you love them. Be safe out there. Have a great day, Dapper Squad. Peace.